there is an assassin killing your CD-based collection disc by disc. What is CD rot and how to prevent it? Coming up in this video. If you want to get to the next level with me, consider subscribing if you already haven't and hit the bell button to get notified when I upload a new video. 30 years ago, sold us the idea of shiny discs that would at least last a hundred years. Now, 20, 30 years later, we know that that was a flat out lie. There is a limitation to the life expectancy of CDs and CD-ROMs. When I talk to people and even collectors, when I talk about CD rot, they don't know what CD rot is. Scratches are a bit forgiving on a disc, but CD rot means instant death of your disc. For scratches, you have to apply some kind of violence, but for CD rot, you don't have to do anything. Just store them on a shelf and time, oxygen, moist and light will do it for you. Especially Mega CD and Saturn games are prone to form victim of CD rot. But what is CD rot? Well, a CD is made out of two layers of transparent plastic and a metallic layer in the middle. And on top of that is uh, like this, uh, a label. But those two layers are glued together. But over time, the, uh, the glue will loosen. That means that uh, oxygen and moist can reach the metal layer in your disc. And what happens if metal and uh, oxygen uh, is combined with moist, it means rust, 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 rust. That is what CD rot actually is. It's rusting from the metal layer in your disc. Your CD reader, or in my case, my Saturn needs that reflective layer to read from the disc. If it can't read it, there's no data on it, according to the reader. But how to check for CD rot? Well, on the outside, you can't see if the disc is eaten by CD rot. What you can do is hold it up against the light and spinning the disc so you can see if there are little tiny holes in the disc. And as I just said, this is how a CD is supposed to look that is good. How to protect against CD rot? Well, first of all, store them in a dark environment. When light or sunlight can't reach the disc, it can't dry out the glue. Second of all, protect it against moist. Third of all, protect against temperature fluctuations. Fluctuations mean that when uh, it's getting warmer, the, your disc will expand, and when it's getting colder, it will shrink. That means extra strain on the glue. In the summer, you're pretty solid, but in the winter, for example, you heat up your room at day, and when it's getting colder at night, your disc will expand and shrink every day. That means unnecessary strain on the glue. And fourth of all, protect against oxygen. That seems a hard one, but I'll explain what I do. First of all, I work with grip bags. Those bags uh, are just a few cents uh, a piece. You can get 40 bags for two euros or something. Grip bags uh, mean that you can store them without oxygen and even moisture can't reach the discs. The, you can also seal the games, but then you can't play them. Grip bags are ideal for that. You can open them and you can close them again. Number two, store them in a plastic box. Oxygen can't reach it really easy. Uh, oxygen can't really uh, reach it easily. Number three, I also try to store them in a dark place. For example, my closet when, where there is no light. And number four, I try to, to store them in a place with next to no temperature changes. And in my closet, there isn't a heater. I hope you learned something today and I hope to see you next time. That's it already for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love making these videos for you, but in order to continue to do that, I need your support. You can support me for free just by hitting the thumbs up button so YouTube will offer my video to more people. 
it means the world to me. You can also subscribe to my channel if you like and hit the bell button to stay updated. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.